compare Wireshark stable release and development versions. And we looked at this a little bit in the last section of this course. Notice that Wireshark has a specific numbering system that can tell us when we're working on a stable release version or a development release version. If we take a look at a Wireshark version such as 1.10.7, and we compare that to a version numbering system that's a.b.c, the a position indicates the major version number, and we're just on the cusp of Wireshark 2 being released. The b indicates if this release is a stable release or a development release. When the number at the b position is an odd number, then it's a development release. So 1.11 would be a development release. 1.11 just moved to 1.99, and that's also a development release. Whenever that second number is an even number, then it's a stable release. So 1.10.7, 1.10.8, those would be stable releases. There are also release candidate versions that are out as well. So let's go out to the Wireshark download directory for the development releases and take a look at some of the release numbers. To get to the most current development release versions, don't go under download and select the development release option. Instead, just right from the main page, select the develop tab and then go to latest releases. Then select the operating system you're interested in. So I'm on a Windows 64 host. I'll go into the Windows 64 directory. And here we can see Wireshark Win64, and then we have the major version 1, and then we have the next, which is the minor version, and it tells us whenever it's an odd number, this indicates that it's a development release. And then we have all these 1.9.0s, and the 15, 16, 17, and 18 are different commit numbers. Above that, you see 1.10.8. Now, the 10 indicates it's a stable release, but the fact that it says RC1 means it's a release candidate version. And based on the number that follows that, there have been 23 commits using that numbering system. Let's look at a little bit of information regarding the development process of Wireshark. Wireshark is on its third revision control system. Just in January 2014, Wireshark moved from the subversion repository over to Git. Prior to that, we used to have version numbers such as 1.10.2, and then there would be an SVN number behind it for a subversion number. But now we're in the Git system as of January 2014. Wireshark uses BuildBot servers to automatically rebuild Wireshark every time someone makes a change in the source code repository. And not everybody can put up source code. There are very few people that are allowed to upload to the source code repository. If you want to contribute to Wireshark, visit www.wireshark.org forward slash develop.html. That's where you'll find the developer's guide. At this point, let's take a look at the current development process of Wireshark and the current status of the BuildBot servers. Here's the code review area for Wireshark. In here, you'll find the short log listing that shows you information about what has been added to Wireshark just recently. And below that, you'll see tags regarding the version numbers. So we can see that Wireshark version 1.11.4 was changed over to Wireshark version 1.99. As I mentioned before, we're just getting ready to release the 2.0 version of Wireshark. So this happened two days ago. Gerald did this. Now let's take a look at the status of the BuildBot servers. If you go to buildbot.wireshark.org forward slash trunk forward slash, you'll get to this page. It's the welcome page for the BuildBot servers for Wireshark. There are various display options for looking at the BuildBot server information. One of the more interesting ones is the waterfall display. So I'll click on the hyperlink for the waterfall display. Here we can see the different BuildBot servers here on the right hand side. And then we also have on the left hand side one that's listed as Clang Code Analysis. 
and Clang is a source code analyzer that looks for any sort of errors in source code. Clang is always running against the code. We can see a build taking place on the right hand side, the Windows XP x86 build, and it tells us that the ETA estimated time of arrival is about 1 hour and 28 minutes. If we scroll down, we can see the time in UTC on the left. We can see who's committed changes on the left as well. And we can see the status of the build process. You can get a general idea that green is good. Orange indicates some sort of a warning or potential problem. Red would be bad. So as we scroll down further, we'll see that there were some problems. We can see that there was a problem here, running clang against the code. And if we go back further in time, we'll see additional problems that occurred. So the waterfall view is a really nice view to show you what's going on with the current development process of Wireshark. Again, if you're interested in getting involved in developing for Wireshark, you can go to the main Wireshark page, and then under the Development tab, you'll see Get Involved and the Developer's Guide. The Developer's Guide is probably one of the first places you want to go to to learn about how to develop for Wireshark. In addition, every year at the SharkFest conference, there's sessions focused on developing for Wireshark.